Hello. In today's video, we are going to be covering the IXL assignment, multiplying integers with that shortcut code of DQT. So earlier we worked on adding and subtracting integers. Now we're on to multiplying. The nice thing is with multiplying integers, we don't have quite as many rules. And I think they're a little bit easier to remember. So let's dive right into that. Our rules for multiplying integers are also the same for dividing. So whether you're multiplying or dividing, this set of rules applies. So the first set is if you have a positive number and you are multiplying it by another positive number, your answer will stay positive. So a positive times a positive is a positive. So here in this example, a positive two times a positive two results in a positive four. All positive straight across. Now, if we have a negative number and you multiply or divide it by another negative number, that makes a positive. So that double negative makes a positive, okay? So negative two times negative two will result in a positive four. So essentially for multiplying and dividing, if their signs are the same, your answer is going to be positive. So if they're both positive, it stays positive. If they're both negative, it turns positive. Now when they're different, so if you have a positive number times a negative number, or even vice versa, a negative times a positive, then you will get a negative number as your answer. So a positive two times a negative two results in a negative four. So if their signs are opposite, you have one positive and one negative, your answer will be negative. Another thing to help out with this is to make sure that you guys have your multiplication facts memorized because half of this assignment is getting the negative and positive sign correct. The other half is working on our multiplication. So here I do have a copy of a multiplication chart, but this is something that you guys could save and use as a study tool because it is important that you have your multiplication facts memorized. It helps make the work a little bit faster and quicker. And then as you get to more difficult math, if you're able to do this stuff super quick in your head, it's one less thing to focus on. It's just automatic. So then your brain can focus on the new material. So if you don't have your multiplication tables memorized, or maybe like you're really good at your fives, but you struggle with your nines. This is something that you could print and use to study on like a weekly basis. Take five or 10 minutes a week, um, or sorry, five or 10 minutes a day and pick a set to go through. Work on your three times tables on Monday, then your fours on Tuesday. And you could have a sibling or a parent just kind of quiz you and it would only take a couple minutes. And if you practice like that on a regular basis, eventually you'll get it memorized. Okay, now let's jump right into that IXL assignment and get some actual practice here. Because remember with integers, a positive times a positive is a positive, a negative times a negative is a positive. And then if you have one of each, a positive and a negative, your answer is negative. All right, so here we are on that IXL assignment, multiply integers with that shortcut code of DQT. We are asked to multiply negative one times six. All right, first, what my brain is gonna do is it's going to figure out what the answer is. I'm just gonna look at the absolute value, so the positive version, and say, okay, well, one times six is six. But now I'm gonna think of those rules, and I notice that I have a negative, times a positive, a negative one times a positive six, which means our answer will be negative. See if that's right. Ooh, it is, good. All right, now we have a negative seven times a negative six. So this time, maybe you don't wanna do it that maybe. Maybe you don't wanna do the multiplication first and then figure out the sign because you might forget to figure out the sign. So the better way to do it might actually be to work on your sign first, then figure out the answer. Now I notice here 
that I have a negative seven times a negative six. Well, a negative times a negative is a positive. So my answer is going to be a positive number. Now let's figure out what's seven times six. Give you guys a second. Seven times six is 42. So our answer is a positive 42, which means I only have to write 42. I don't need the positive number with a positive sign because nothing else is there. All right, negative four times eight. So I like what I did last time. Let's figure out the sign first because we don't want to accidentally forget to do that. All right, I have a negative four, so a negative times a positive eight. Well, a negative times a positive is a negative. All right, now that I figured out the sign, let's do the math. What's four times eight? 32, negative 32 is our answer. All right, let's do one more for, actually let's jump a level. All right, ooh, so these are the larger numbers. This is actually great because this is something that you may need to just work out by hand because I don't expect you to have your 80 times tables memorized, no but it is still something that you want to do without a calculator because questions like these would be on the non-calculator portion of your test. And it helps us remember how to multiply because I know you guys know how to do it. It just, maybe you need a refresher because you know it's been summer, it's been a minute. All right, first let's figure out that sign. We have a negative six times a positive 80 a negative times a positive, my answer is going to be a negative. Go ahead and put that there so I don't forget. Now we need to multiply and we're gonna go ahead and multiply longhand because you may not be able to do this in your head and that's fine. So we have 80 times six. And that is the, this is the only time I put an X for times. Other than that, no, no, no. Remember to use a dot or parentheses because we don't want to get that X confused with variables later on. All right, when you multiply, we put the larger number on top, the smaller on the bottom, and then we multiply that six. So six times zero is zero, and then six times eight, 48. There's nothing else. I don't need to do any carrying, so I can just bring that 48 down which means our answer is a negative 480. All right, let's try one more and then we'll be done. So negative 17 times negative 19. Let's figure out that sign first. We have a negative number being multiplied by another negative. A negative times a negative is a positive. All right, now when we work this out, this one will be another one where we need to work out because I don't expect you to have these memorized. So past your 10s or your 12s, I don't expect you to have them memorized. So that's where paper can come in handy and you can just work it out by hand. We have 19 times 17. All right, first let's multiply with that seven. Let's turn him a different color. All right, so seven times nine would be 63. So with 63, we write down the three, but remember we carry the six. Now I can do seven times one. Seven times one is seven, and then we add the six. So seven plus six would be 13. Nothing else is there, so I bring the whole 13 down. This part's important to make sure you guys don't forget this. Before I can move over and multiply everything by one, since we're moving over a space, we're going from the ones place to the tens place, we need to put that zero because we're moving over a spot. So now we have one times nine, which is nine, one times one, which is one. And then we add these up and that'll give us our final answer. So three plus zero is three. What about three plus nine? 
12. So we bring down the two, carry the one. One plus one plus one is three. And we said at the very beginning, our answer was positive. So we have a positive 323. All right. So I hope this helps. If not, guys, remember to reach out to your teacher via email or attend those help sessions so we can work with you some more. Bye.